Mercury is poured into a U-tube as shown in figure A. The left arm of the tube has a cross-section area of A1 of 10.5 cm cubed, and the right arm has a cross-section area of A2 of 5.4 cm cubed. 400 grams of water are then poured into the right arm as shown in figure B. Determine the length of the water column in the right arm of the U-tube. So we have area 1 is 10.5 centimeters, which is going to be this area of this side of the tube. A2 is 5.4 centimeters, and that's going to be this side of the tube. And we need to find the length or height of the water column in the right, right arm of the U-tube. So we need to find the area or the, the height of the water here. And so how can we do that? Well, we, we know that this is a cylinder, and we need to find an equation that includes h. And so um, what, what do we have from equations for a cylinder? We have the volume, which would be the volume of a cylinder is equal to the area of the circle on the cylinder times its height. And in this case, that would be area 2. So now we have a way to find h, but we're not given any volume. Um, so, so how can we find volume? Well, we're given the mass, given the mass and the and we know the density of water, which is 1. So we can use these two, or this, the mass of the water and the density of water to solve for the volume, which is going to be density is equal to mass over volume. So volume is going to be equal to mass over density. So we can plug this in for B and we get the mass of water over the density of water is going to be equal to the area of the right cylinder times the height of the water. And that's how we can find the height of the water here. or the length. So plugging in our values we have 400 grams of water divided by the density of water which is 1 gram per cubic centimeter divided by our area our second area which is 5.4 centimeters We end up getting a height value of 400 divided by 5.4, 74.07 centimeters for the height of our water. Given that the density of mercury is 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter, what, what distance h does mercury rise in the left arm? So notice here that when we added the water, the, the mercury was level before the water was added, and since we added the water, the mercury that was here in this area was now displaced to this area. So here there's no mercury, here there is mercury, here there's no mercury, and here there was mercury. So this means that and we need to find the height of mercury and we know that the density it's giving us the density of mercury so what equation can we use to find the density or the the height of mercury based on density and with density and height well we have variation of pressure with depth and that's going to give us the pressure of the liquid it's going to be equal to uh, atmospheric pressure plus the density of the liquid and the height of the liquid with gravity. So we can use this equation. To solve for the height that mercury rises right here. And so how can we do that? Well, um, pressure in a liquid is equal at any given elevation as long as it's equal, um, equal elevation. So that means that the pressure here from the water 
is going to be equal to the pressure on this side of the tube containing the mercury. So what does this exactly mean? Well, it means that using this equation, we can set the pressure is going to be equal, so we can set the right side of the tube equal to the left side of the tube with different variables in pressure. So we have on the right side of the tube, we're going to have pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus gravity times the density of water, which is 1, times the height of water, which is 74.07 centimeters. And why are we using these values? Or this to explain this equation further, we have the pressure at this point right here is due to the fact that the atmosphere or atmospheric pressure is going to be pushing down on the water along with the gravity and we're going to multiply that times the height of the water which indicates how much water is actually present. And so on this side of the tube then we can calculate the pressure and that's going to be equal to the same amount of pressure distributed so it's going to be equal to P and we're going to have the atmospheric pressure plus the gravity times the density of mercury times the height. And notice here, I'll show it on this one. The height at this point on this side is going to be equal to this amount of mercury or equal to this amount of water the height of this amount of water plus the height of the mercury over the equilibrium line in the original part. So it's going to be, we call this H, the height right here we can call H2 and that means that to find the pressure at this point we're going to have to take the height of H plus H2 to give us this whole value this whole height value here of mercury. So H plus H2. And since these equations are equal, they have the same pressure value, we can set them equal to one another. So we can set this equal to P0 plus gravity times the density of water, which is 1 times 74.07 centimeters. And this is going to go away. So now we can see that the atmospheric pressure is on both sides of the equation. So we can cancel that or subtract it out. And along with gravity is on both sides of the equation, so we can divide that out and that will cancel. So what we're left with is the pressure of mercury times the height on the left side of the tube is equal to the pressure of water times or the density of mercury and the density of water times the height of the water. And it would be the pressure of water. I put that in there. I didn't write it because it's only one, but so now we can solve for H. But if you notice we have H2 here and we don't have a value for H2. So we need to figure out how to find H2. And well, like before we talked about, if this is H, we're going to call this H2. And so how can we go about finding that? Well, the, the volume of mercury that was, this, that was originally right here was then displaced to go on the left side of the tube right here, which means that the volume on each side of, that, of the tube is going to be exactly equal. And how do we find the volume of a cylinder, again it's going to be volume equals area times the height. So we can set the two area or the two volumes equal to one another because it's the same exact volume. So on this left side of the tube we have area 1 which is 10.5 centimeters and so the volume on this side is going to be equal to A1 H and on 
the left on the right side of the tube is going to be equal to a two a two h two right here. So setting these two equations equal to one another, just like the pressure, because they are the same, we end up getting a two h two is equal to a one h. And we can solve for H2 by dividing A2 over. We get A1 over A2 times H is going to be equal to H2. And we know our area values, which are 10.5 and 5.4. So plugging them in, we have 10.5 divided by 5.4. And we get 1.94H for H2, which means that H2 is actually going to be 1.94 times bigger than H. So this was our H2, and that was our H. This was our water. We can get rid of that. So now we can plug 1.94 into H2 here. 1.94H. We can divide the, the density of mercury over. So we get H plus 1.94H is equal to 74.07 centimeters for the height of the water divided by well, times 1 for the pressure for the density of water divided by the density of mercury, which is given to us at 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter. And then we have to divide by whatever this value is to find H. And since there is no value here, it's going to be a 1 in front of the the H here. So adding these two up, we get 2.94 H is equal to this. We can divide by 2.94. And we end up getting value of H of 74.07 divided by 13.6 divided by 2.94. And we end up getting a value of 1.8 centimeters.